So we have a Crate LS3 here. We're gonna check the push rod length on this engine. Um, did the cam, we put ported heads on. So it's kind of in that spot where the cam's still dot to dot. Um, and I wanna check cylinder one. So this is a wrong spot for cylinder one, but I'm gonna show you how to find the right spot. Um, basically this is cylinder six is what that is. So let me just mark that. So when it's dot to dot, you could check preload on cylinder six. Cylinder one is opposite. So we want to rotate it around to where the camshaft dot is at 12 o'clock. So basically it's just rotating crank around one turn and that's where cylinder one, you could check the push rod length on. So both valves are closed. This is a firing position for cylinder one. So you're on the base circle of the camshaft with both lifters. Um, another way to do that, if you have the timing cover on, is you could put two dummy push rods in and watch the valve action. The intake's gonna open right here. And then when the intake closes, the next time the piston is all the way up, so that's the piston, that's top dead center. So if you have the timing cover off, you could do it that way too. And basically top dead center, base circle of the cam. And we could check. Um, these heads aren't milled, so this is a pretty standard setup. This would be almost the same as cam only uh, for most people. Um, so what I usually do is I'll take a push rod, kind of a guess, and this is 7400. Usually 7400 is kind of the 99% of the crowd for cam only or heads and cam with unmilled heads. If you mill the heads 30 thousandths, you may need a 7.375 length, which would be 25,000 shorter than, than these guys. Um, stock is 7.385. So anyway, The rocker arms on. I'm just gonna run them down. Basically, what we want to do is get to that start of that lash, uh, where the end of the lash is, rather. So that's it right there. Do it on both, and we're gonna do the counting how many quarter turns it takes to, to get down to uh, where we have preload. There's lash, and right there. So this is zero lash right now, but not torqued down. And each quarter turn, so I always set my ratchet at 12 o'clock, each quarter turn is roughly 18 to 20 thousandths. It's actually like 0 0.0184, um, but 20 thousandths works for the hydraulic lifter because it's just easier to multiply a, a round number versus 18.4 thousandths. Um, for the more stricter setup, like a Johnson lifter that you're trying to target 35 thousandths, yeah, I'll use the, the, the numbers or use a dial indicator to, to make it more accurate. But anyway, we'll do the exhaust first, since it's similar to an LS1. That's one quarter turn, two quarter turns, three, four, one full turn, five, about five and a half. So just to not do this math in my head, so at five turns, that's 0 0.0184, and that's 92. Actually, I had five and a half, so I'll do five and a half times Zero one eight four, and that's right at a hundred thousandths. A lot of LS seven style lifters or LS three, the replacement OEM lifter. If you actually measure it before you pull it apart, it'll be between this number here, about a hundred thousandths to about a hundred and ten thousandths. So you know, just running slamming off the shelf parts, and we have our target number real easy. Now we could actually go twenty five thousand shorter, like a seven. 0.375 and still be right. Um, if we did like a 7450, we'd be way wrong because it would add like another 50,000 to this. And that, that'd be the ex 
the end of the travel for that. The way a lifter works is it kind of wants to hover between, let's say this is lash and this is bottomed out. The lifter wants to be kind of in that middle spot right here. Um, you could run it, you know, a little bit either direction, let's say 25 thousandths either direction, and you're still not close to those constraints. But this is no go, this is no go, bottomed out or fully extended because you just are too close to the end of that lifter travel. Um, so I like anywhere on these engines, like a LS7 drop-in style lifter, I like 80 to 100. If it's 75 thousandths, I'd probably run it just fine. It's not going to cause any issues. If it was 35, I'd put in a longer push rod. If it was 125 thousandths, I would back off the push rod length and kind of try to ke catch that window that I like, that 80 to 100 number. Um, sometimes the, the intake is a little bit different, so while we're here, we'll just kind of check the intake. So that's quarter turn, half turn, three quarters, one full turn, five. So that one's gonna be closer to that 95 thousandths. We'll just do it real quick. Five times, point zero one eight. 92,000 so intakes 92 exhaust is 101 um, can't get much better than that uh, one more thing we could do is we could do use a push rod length checker if you don't have a known value we'll kind of do that same test here these sockets are a little bit worn out they want to fall over everywhere So the push rod length checker, comp cams, or the Texas Speed one, they start at 6,800. And every little hash mark is 50 thousandths. So you get pretty much 50 thousandths accuracy when the lines are lined up. And then basically every tur full turn is another 50 thousandths. If you have to go in 25 thousandths increments, basically you have to put one, one line's gonna be 180 degrees from each other. If you were trying to get that accurate, normally we could get you know, a rough estimate by what you need to kind of get you in the ballpark with the 50 thousandths number. Um, and we sell push rods in 25 thousandths increments along with which everybody in the world. Um, and there are push rod manufacturers that do sell any, any increment. If you say I want a 7.423 push rod, uh, there are companies that can make that, but it's not necessary for the typical hydraulic lifter setup. Um, so anyway, um, it starts off at 6,800, so adding half an inch would be 10 turns out, uh, 500 thousandths. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's 7,300. So if I put 7,300 in here, we're going to have lash because it's not fully um, pushing down the lifter uh, plunger. So you basically are trying to make up that distance. Uh, this is a tool to use to find that measurement. So the rocker arm's here, touching here, and you need to know this length from this push rod cup on the rocker arm to the lifter cup way down inside the block. And you're using this as the tool to, to find that measurement. Um, so once you put this in and extend it to where I, I messed it up now, but basically once you push this in and you find what that zero preload is with that tool, let's say it's 7300, which is what it should be because we already measured it as a 7400. Once you find that, n that number to where it's not pushing up on the rocker arm, you take that number 7300 and you add your desired preload. So let's say we wanted 75 thousandths. We'd take 7,300, add 75 thousandths, and you'd be 7,375. Um, if you wanted 100 thousandths, like we have with the 7,400, you add the easy 100 thousandths to it, and you come up with 7,400. So it, it's, it's one of those things that the more you do it, the more comfortable you are. And there's engines that we'll build, you know, 100 of the same parts, and the, hundredth and one one 
will take a different push rod than the previous hundred. So it, it's almost kind of like custom adjusting like a hat or a belt for that setup is sometimes you have to change it um, versus what you typically would get in a cam package. And you know, the next one I do may take a 7375 with the same exact parts. It's just one of those things that without measuring it, you don't know what your preload is. So it's, it's a good thing to check. Um, but yeah, it's, it's simple once you've got it down.